Welcome again. This is going to be a late session. Oh no, this session ain't for everyone. This session isn't for everybody. Not everybody will be able to do this. Not everybody is going to be able to do this session. We'll see all those mini chat already. Trin Sanity first, Stefan, Belinda, Lexian, welcome. First four, Nishal, Upshot, Gabriel, Kiba, Kiba, Maloney, Okoen, Kiba, um, Kayana, Shania, Lo, Joe, Savage, Dean, Antonio. People making it, people making it, but this session is not going to be for everybody. <laughs> this is going to be a little rough session because. See the time we start, it going to end up, it going to end up in the, going to end up in a late night here. So this is not for the, this is for the, the real diehards. Today we're going to also, today, we're doing like the, the middle zone of the mathematics. We're going to do the, the middle of your mathematics people, like from question 4 to question 5, 6, question 4, 5, and 6, that's what we're doing today. So far we have two papers loaded up, but as we go along, we load up some more papers. We do in January 2018. I was now going and sleep. Well, get awake. Because <laughs> we're going down. While I was doing whole night, I just came from church. I had a meeting in church. I play music for church. So we have 53 people online already. Um, so tonight is a long session. It's a long session. We work in with whoever we have. We have 53 people online. Those who went and sleep or had to take it in after. Or who knows, maybe the phone might wake them up or if they wake up and smell the live, they will say, all right, time to, time for the live, time for the live. 54 people. We'll see how that goes. Good to see all of you all, Aliyah, Shania, Nadia, Darian, Tayus, Gabriel, Jamie, Elisha is here. All right, I've seen a lot of people from, anybody else here three nights? Anybody else here three nights? The three nights? Yeah, man. Somebody is about to do POE. Somebody is a dyad. Yeah, yeah, Shania, I know that. You're, you're always here. Still at the first video, do geometry and trigonometry. We do in ge geometry and trigonometry the next day. Most likely it's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, if I do it tomorrow, I may be starting back at 9 o'clock. So tomorrow we'll catch some of the early birds as well. Right now it's really late. It's really late. Late bugs. People who are custom. Taking in some late sessions. Alright, we are about to start. We are about to start. Um that. Just doing some housekeeping here. Making sure everything in our gear. And alright, then that's what happened. Nothing. Alright, so that's how I did it to be. I have the super chat here. Why this not so so big? I don't know. Yeah, scroll along with this. Sixty-seven people on. So what we doing tonight? Let me let me write it in the title. <sighs> Crash course, C-Sec maths. Um, we'll be doing some a little bit of coordinate geometry again. What we're really doing is measurement, volume, all them thing. Those questions that people underestimate, but as really kill them off when they really study it. Measurement and uh, transformation and statistics. This transformation is not a matrix transformation. This is the, this is a normal transformation that is behave itself like reflection and thing, you know. In normal transformation in section one. So that's what we're doing tonight. Any Tagorians? Just curious. Anybody from there? 76 people here. Hey, people, people crawling out their bed and think to take stick in some maths life. To take in some maths life. So I think we can begin. So this here is obviously some coordinate geometry. Because remember I said we didn't hit. Last night we do some coordinate geometry. But we forget to like hit off this part of coordinate geometry. So we're doing that. This. So if you can see the question, you can 
this is January 2018, you could begin doing it. The two papers I have up so far is January 2018 and May 2017, so you could organize them papers to begin. So you could begin doing this if you have this paper, January 2018. This, 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 this live is not brought to you by Trinidad Fresh, but Trinidad Fresh, if you want to be here every live, you know, you could, you could, you could, you could organize some money. But it is brought to you today by Polori. It is brought to you today, today by Polori. And by Sponge Cake. Alright? So we're looking at this. We're looking at this. You had to draw these straight lines x plus 10, x plus y equal 10, and y is equal to x and the, and the grid. These lines, they were to draw in the grid. But if you go on any question, you'll realize that the inequality, these lines are attached to those inequality. The trickiest inequality is here is this one, and we'll explain that. So immediately, once you see x plus y is equal to a number, from linear programming, you know that that line will go from 10 to 10, the number in question, right? So that's how that line goes. You can substitute points and you'll see that that's how that line will go. That's just how the line will go. Uh, the line y is equal to x. Everybody should know by now how the line y equal to x looks. The line y equal to x. The line y is equal to x looks like this. Straight through the zero. You know? And what, what happens is like 5 will line up with 5. 10 will line up with 10. Because it's the line y equal to x. So that's, 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 that's the mystery behind that line there. So this is the line y is equal to x, and this here is the line um, x plus y is equal to 10. Alright, so we do the first part, we collect two marks. You can always substitute into these, into these equations up here to get that. You can always substitute values of x and y to, if you, if you forget how to figure out that. Alright, so now on the same grid, Shade the region which satisfies the four inequalities. This first inequality is x is greater than or equal to zero. Where is x greater than or equal to zero? X is greater than, this is zero, and this is the x-axis. So everywhere in this direction, x is greater than or equal to zero. So or x is also greater than or equal to zero here, you know. But it needs to satisfy all. So what we're going to do is do a little plenty color shade in here and see which one. So this is the spot where x is equal to 0. So in your mind you're thinking that you, you lock off that section there because there's a the section where x is equal to 0. This section here. Right? And then you want the section also where it's now equal to 0, greater than 0. You want this, uh, the other section that you want, the other section that you want, y must be greater than or equal to 0. I'm moving too fast. I'm moving too fast. Alright, I'll slow down. This is an inequalities question. This is when this is in section two. If they bring an inequality section question, it will be on linear programming. In section one, in those first questions, if they bring an inequalities question, it will look like this. And you need to understand what happened in here. So they start you off and they told you to draw these two lines. So we just draw those two lines. We draw x plus y is equal to ten, and we draw y is equal to x. That's the blue and the green line I draw down there. Blue and the green line. So this is y is equal to x, and this is x plus y is equal to not zero, ten. Anybody, anybody then nobody didn't pick up on that mistake and yeah, Darian, thanks, thanks, brother. So ten. That's ten there. X plus y is equal to ten. Alright, so we have those two lines now. And now on this same grid or graph, we want to shade the region which satisfy all of these inequalities. So we want when x is greater than 0. On this side, x is not greater than 0. But on this whole side here, any point you put here, x will be greater than 0, whether it's up top or bottom. Then you also want y to be greater than 0. y is greater than 0. Remember, admats exist. <laughs> next week for the admats, people. Next week, next week. All right. So this section here is where y is greater than 0. So, so far, we've seen that this is, the, this is the spot. But there are some more inequalities here to look at. 
we are also looking at this inequality where x plus y where x plus a mosquito trying to eat my polari by where x plus y is less than or equal to 10 so less than 10 and that's underneath here that would be where x plus y when you add them up together you get less than 10 let me let you check a point and see like if i pick this point here that's 5 and 1 no 5 and 2.5 or whatever add that up you'll get less than 10 so is everything underneath the green line so so far we're locking off that section now we just need to see whether 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 they want this spot or this spot let's see that's the final inequality to look at there we want the inequality where x is greater than or equal to y where is x greater than or equal to y where is x greater than or equal to y well, let's look at let's look at this line now this could also be rearranged as y and you put keep you keep the point facing the y is less than or equal to x and people are accustomed with this they know what that means that means everything underneath the line so it's really this is really this this is the shaded region they want right but you could also verify that um let's let, like you pick up you choose a point here this is the point 5 2.5 5 on the x is greater than 2.5 on the y so it works so that is the region that is the region we're looking for the region we want and remember i told you i told you all to um the best way to shade this region would be like this just take your ruler your clear ruler and create some quick cross hashes on it and make it look neat now so yeah every time somebody come on they say save the video because i guess they had to go and sleep or whatever i always save the video they are right now there are three three hour videos on about 50 percent of mathematics with cxc so if you sit down and you had the time and you watch that video it's a nice preparation but those who watch it in the live We'll get more out of it because they can talk to me and tell me to slow down. I don't understand this or point out certain things. All right, let's go on to the next part. So you get to see a little bit of linear inequalities here. Um, let's go on to this. So look at this and answer this question. Yeah, yeah, genius. If you want to find which one bigger, test it. That's the best way to go, because sometimes you get a little mixed up with the inequalities. So just use a point. Just use a point in each region and see if it satisfies the inequality. So, like, let's just look back at this inequality. It says x plus y must be less than 10. What about if I pick this point here? This is the point that we say 7.5 and 10. 7.5 and 10, it's not less than 10. So that, that doesn't satisfy that inequality. So it has to be everything underneath here. As then? You need to pick a point and see. All right, so everybody knows a hexagon. But what does this tell you? As you're doing a pass paper, you always need to look at, okay, they ask me about a hexagon. Maybe they could ask me about heptagon, octagon, nanogon. So make sure you know the names of the common shapes. Make sure you know the names of the common shapes straight up to nanogon. Right? But I don't know how come. Maybe for um, multiple choice. But hexagon, pentagon, a quadrilateral, a triangle. Well, they do have a two-sided shape, right? <laughs> But make sure you know that. Make sure you know your types of triangles, everything about triangles. This is where, like, people who feel they are, they, they are at about a grade 2 or grade 1 level, this is where you go into your textbook and make sure you go through to the find it, comb and you check out all the different things in the maths. And a lot of your questions here you will see, there's like little, little things you should know that, you know, if you didn't revise before the exam, you just fail the question. But it's just a little thing. It's just a little thing that you should know. Alright, so this is a hexagon. And they're going to ask you about this. This is the geometry or the measurement question. And this is the question where people is um, underestimate, as I said, because people so prepare for the deadly matrices and the vectors and the geometry and the circle terms and the trigonometry and the bearings and the angle of elevation, da 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 da, and the algebra that they forget about the other parts of maths with measurement and with the prism and with volume. And when they see the volume question, and for the last two years, the volume question has been very challenging for students. It's always an external diameter and an internal diameter and you take away the two volumes. So, take a look at that. That was January. Take a look at January 
2019 and May 2018. Maybe you'll watch that at the end of this video. Let's keep going. Calculate the perimeter of the polygon E, F, G, H, I, G. So we want to find the perimeter. How are we going to find the perimeter? Well, if you know this is 5, so everybody could get the answer there, put it in the comments. How are we going to find the perimeter there? So the perimeter would be equal to 6 times a side. Right? 6 times, because it's 6 sides, so 6 times 5 cm, 30 cm centimeters. Next part. Determine the size of the interior angle of the polygon. So we're going to look how to find the interior angle and how to find the exterior angle. There's a formula for it. I see it somewhere. I'm going to write out the formula for integer interior angle. Why well, don't do pure maths? Soon, soon, soon. Alright, so this is the formula that, that we take the sum of the interior angles. So let me go on a clean page to just teach a little bit about this. That's uh, a way I like the teachers to teach like if I don't like if I don't know the topic as well. So it's like an exploration and, and we discover it together. So let's discover it. Let's discover it together. So the sum of interior angles in a polygon is equal to uh, n minus 2 times 180 or 180 by n minus 2. Now this is something that you need to know. So take a moment, sit your Trinidad Fresh. I should stop advertising for Trinidad Fresh. And think about that. The sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180. What does that mean? That means if you have a polygon, a regular polygon, eh, meaning that the size them equal. This is a pentagon. A very ugly pentagon. <laughs> right? It means that if we add up all the interior angles, it's going to be equal to n minus 2 times 180. What is n? What is this n? This n is the number of sides. 5 minus 2 times 180. So this is 3 times 180. So once again, I repeat, this is one of the formulas that you need to know. And this is one of the formulas that students overlook. If you look in your formula sheet, very likely you're not going to see this one at the start of the exam. So this is one of the formulas you need to have in your back pocket and just stick it out in the exam, pow, and pay down there, right? The sum of the interior angles is equal to n minus 2 times 180. People are linking down the question. All right, so this, this, this here, yes, this is 540. Now, always try and memorize, when you're learning formulas, maths, physics, chemistry, anything, Always try and just learn one formula and you can derive other stuff from it. So you learn one formula and you can get other stuff from it. Like you learn V is equal to U plus AT. You learn um, V minus U over T. Well, the same thing, acceleration, V minus U over T. And then you can derive all the motion formulas. So I talk more physics there. Um, you try to learn one thing so you can derive everything from it. So it turned out that all 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 the angles in this 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 pentagon adds up to 540 a regular a regular polygon. Now that still doesn't answer the question that we want. How, what is the size of one of the angle here? One of the angle. Well, all you have to do is divide by the number of sides because you have one, two, three, four, five angles. So you just learn the sum in formula n minus two times 180. Make sure you have that. Don't go and write it in your hand and get catch by the invigilator and get you the exam and ban from CXE for life. It's a very easy formula to remember. N minus 2 times 180. 
And if you want to find the size of one specific angle, you divide by the number of sides. So n minus 2 divided by n will not give me the sum. It will give me the size of one interior angle. You just divide by that. So like for this, I'll just divide by 5, and that will give me the size of one interior angle. One of the interior angles. Which is 108 in this case. So it means that one of these angles is 108 degrees. So that's how you work out size of interior angles. And very likely this will come for you and me. Either it will come in your paper too, or it will touch on one question in your paper one in your multiple choice. So now you know that. You have no excuse. Go and learn that. I tell you to learn that. Yeah? I tell you to learn that. So determine the size of the, each of the interior angle in a polygon. And one more thing I need to teach on it, but let me answer this question. People don't answer it already. So you'll say the sum of the angles would be equal to n minus 2 by 180. n is the number of sides. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sides. So you say 6 minus 2 times 180. So that's 4 times 180. So that is 720. So therefore, the size of one angle, the interior angle, is going to be 720 divided by 6 equal to 120 degrees. Obviously, I wouldn't jumble it up and write it neater than that, you know. Hey, my head doing the blocking thing there. Oh, if I yes. All you can live. All you see that is 120 degrees. Where my arrow, boy? I'm going to come, no, 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 you say so, me, come around, yeah, right, so, so it's 120 degrees, next question, oh, I say I wanted to show you one more thing on that, I didn't do the ad match cash course yet, oh gosh, if you're, if you're following me on Instagram and YouTube, you're safe, you know about everything I'm going to do, I'm not active on Facebook, I have so much messages in my Facebook inbox, and people stop sending me homework. Please, please, please don't send me homework. If everybody send me their homework, I will not time to shoot no videos, edit no videos. Right? Um I love doing things for free and helping people, but you know there's a there's a limit. I teach a lot of lessons to make money to pay for Chavi to live a good life, you understand? Um 720, 120 degrees, da 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 The next thing I wanted to teach you. Next thing I wanted to teach you all was about, so we talk about interior angles, if you're just paying, atten paying attention and doing the admats for the people. Give me a YouTube money. <laughs> but every YouTube money I make, I can't say that my wife, my wife here, if she hears us saying she can like that, but I give it away most of the time. That if you watch back and see in one of the last videos I do, I give away the money. So um, next time, next next time it bulk up again, we'll see. We'll do some crazy stuff. All right, all right, all right. Um, interior angles. So we talk about. So we talked about interior angles, and we said the formula for the sum of those guys is equal to n minus two times one eighty. Zion, <laughs> it's n minus 2 times 180. And if you want to find one of them, one of the interior is going to be equal to n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. You just divide by the number of sides. What about the exterior angles? What about the exterior angles, Corwin? So what is an exterior angle in the first place? An exterior angle is like if you lengthen this, if I lengthen one side of the regular shape, it will be this angle here. This is the exterior angle. I know some people may be zoning out on this and just think, but this is vital stuff I'm telling you. This is, I'm just literally giving you marks here. Please, 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 please pay attention to this. This is very, very important. This is the exterior angle. This is like the middle of your mathematics syllabus. How do we find this angle? And people may already figure it. Nafisa, very good. Very good. Very good. Good, very good, very good. 
So to find the exterior angle, it's simple. To find one of them, to find one of those guys, it's going to be 180 degrees, take away this guy. Hey, let me keep it in red. We, we, we have a color code here, red, white, and black. <laughs> so one of the one of them, one of the exterior angle is gonna be the it's gonna be 180 degrees because it's a straight line. Take away the interior angle. So in other words, do one learn our next formula for exterior angle. Just learn the one formula, n minus two times 180. If you want to find one, you divide by the number of sides. If you want to find the exterior, you just take 180 degrees, take away the interior angle. Hopefully, somebody will settle that in the soul. Somebody will get the marks. Somebody will get listen. And I can see you on my YouTube next year, too. <laughs> next year, too. But um, anyhow, stay, stay subscribed. Stay subscribed. Uh, one of the da, 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 da. So that's everything you need to know on polygons in that kind of way, in that sort of way that it will come. You can actually answer that things about that, but once you know this, you're safe. You're safe. Take it from me. You're safe, 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 safe. Show by calculation that the area of the polygon to the nearest whole number is that. How are we going to find the area of... So don't... They're not... Ex, I, I can tell you pretty safely that CXE doesn't expect for you to know like a formula off the bat for finding the area of all the polygons. Just off the bat like that. They, they're, not, they're not into that. They're not really into that. What you'll need to know is how to use the information you have already to find the formula there, to find the area there. So we're trying to find the area now. So y'all, tell me what you think. How are we going to find the area of that? I said, eat some polar, you tell me where you're going to find the area there. Be. Two trapeziums, okay. But to find, somebody say two trapeziums, and they see that as two trapeziums. But you still need to know the height. And how you're going to find the height. Oh, Fabi Second, you're a pure math student, eh? I think you're doing pure math, so you out here selling out answers. Five by five, Shania, that's not correct. You're trying to use the half AB, half half breadth by height. This this triangle is not a right angle triangle, so we don't know the height of this triangle. Everybody who's saying the hero Heron's formula, I, I I used to say heroes back in school. They correct. And there's a next. Remember, I tell you in this in this session, you're gonna find out one style little things that you should know that you probably don't know. Right, so and, and one of the little things that I should know that comes in your divide the triangle in two. Hmm. Yeah, but you still need to find out the height, and we don't know the height. So if you divide it in two, you still need to do some work, you know. There, that is one way to fight up with it. Like if you didn't know that that half a b sine c, that formula that everybody who know about it saying. That's correct. The half AB sine C. I come into that. But like if you didn't know about the half AB sine C formula, you're gonna probably you're gonna probably divide this triangle in two. That's 90 degrees. This will be 2.5. This will be five. So you use Pythagoras term to figure out the height. You understand? So yeah, you can use you can divide the triangle in two to figure out the height. And once you figure out the height, half breadth by height would be the area of the triangle. But don't think that the height is 5 and you put half 5 by 5 to find the area of the triangle and then you get this. You get this and you multiply this by 6. That, that is what most people do. That is what most people do, I'm telling you. And they get it wrong. <laughs> right? So do that. So the formula, the best formula that I want to use to find the area, there's a formula to find the area of a triangle. It's half AB sine C. 
any this is for any any triangle not just a right angle triangle if you have a triangle and the triangle looks like this remember this remember as I said this is this is the insightful this is the insightful class and you have the angle here so we call that C this side is C but we don't have that side we have the side A and the side B you're using this formula to find the area if you have an angle and two sides so if you have the angle and two I just realized we don't have the angle but yeah we know the angle I'll show you how we have we know the angle and Cooper San welcome back my brother I hope you don't get vexed if we take in long um, the angle is 60 very good very good alright so I'm just gonna walk through this everybody everybody seem like they're waiting for, for the answer here so once you have a triangle like this you use this formula this formula is called H-E-R-O-N formula where you don't even need to know the man name and this formula is given in your formula sheet for the maths exam so once you have this side and that side and the angle in between now what is the angle um, in the triangle you should know that this is 5 and this is 5 because they said it's an equilateral triangle so if it's an equilateral triangle and that is 5 and that is 5 it means that this angle here is 60 all the angles they are 60 so once you know that angle you know them two sides you can record the, the area of that triangle half 5 by 5 sine of 60 hopefully understand, hopefully everybody with me here not just the really fast students and everybody understand this times 5 times 5 times sine of 60 make sure your calculator in like right now my calculator in radians so now I don't want um, I don't want to put us only up back into degrees but you, you don't want to go into degrees go in degrees now brother right all right so half make sure your calculator in degrees eh? If you're using sine of 60, otherwise you need to represent 60 as radians. Make sure you calculate 10 degrees, don't end up in a monkey pants. How I get this 60? How I get that this is 60? Okay. Well, I'm not seeing anybody answering y'all. People should answer any comments, man. So the answer everybody getting is 10.8. 10.8. I'm going to explain how I get the 60. 10.8 cm squared is the area of the triangle, right? So you just multiply that by... You, you should see now that you have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 triangles and multiply that by 6 and you'll get the answer that every the people who shout up before how I get the 60 again the 60 degrees all the and sorry all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 so if it's an equilateral triangle it means that all the angles are 60 very simple 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180 so that's how we know so you need to know about equilateral triangles and isosceles triangles. Yes. So now that we know this, multiply this by you get 65. So the area, you now come now and you say the area is equal to 10.8 times 6. And you guess the, the uh, accurate, more accurate answer is 64.95. But I don't know what they ask for it. They ask for it to the nearest. To the nearest anything. To the nearest whole number. Oh, they ask a show. Well, look at that. So you have a verification of your answer here. 65 cm squared. And then you go here and you, you watch this and you'll be like, oh, I'm correct. So even though the question was a little challenging, you have an answer to work towards. Anytime they ask you, show that. It means you 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 can know whether you're going wrong or correct. At the end of the day, you know whether you get the question. Correct or not? Let me just yep. And um, two. Sha. So that's how we get. Everybody understand that? Now, 
this is one of the topics in maths you cannot bluff you need to actually go and look up questions in your textbook from the past people do as many questions as you can without watching the answer to get your brain thinking and how to think geometrically if you can't bluff your way out of this you can't follow like steps in fine like how you find the inverse function and you just follow steps or you follow some algebra you need to actually think out things like you need to actually do problem solving here you need to actually see that it's an equilateral triangle okay angles are 60 you need to see that these two sides are five so many things you need to see you need to see that is at, at there's six triangles involved here so many things you need to see and that kind of thinking will only come via practice so you can't bluff your way through this okay you have to actually practice with questions a lot of them a tank has a cross so try this question Try this question, why is I eat another polori before they get too cold, my boy? <laughs> hey, JCP, we do have that kind of negativity in this chat, man. We have plenty of guys in the building. I hope all you know is curry chicken and not chicken curry, eh? I think we proved that when they be telling the um, CPL. Curry chicken, not chicken curry. But they do start no island war there. <laughs> Jamaica in the house, love it. People, people said the question, so let me, let me catch up to them. The drunk has a cross section with dimensions identical to the polygon. Read your question. The first thing you should notice is yo, this thing on top here is the same thing. We just find the area of this. This area is 65 cm squared. So we're ready. We're ready. Water is poured into the tank at a rate of 75 centimeters cube per second. So people who bluff, bluffing. <laughs> If you're bluffing, that knocked you out of the bluff day. At a rate of 75 centimeter cube. So meter Q, CMQ, sorry. So this, this is talking about volume. This is talking about how much liquid is added every second. So after 52 seconds, the tank is two-fifths full. Okay? Determine the capacity of the tank in liters. So they, they didn't even walk you through this question. This question would have been easier if they walk you through the ideas of what you need to do. So I'll have to walk you through the idea. Physics is my favorite subject. Physics is one of my favorite subjects. It's one of the subjects I'm more natural in. So I will do some physics. What I'm doing for physics is I'm actually doing whole pass papers. Last year I do two whole pass papers. If you look up, you'll see I have some video videos where I say study physics. Me actually do a whole pass paper and the next whole pass paper. I'm gonna do two more whole pass papers before the exam. Yeah, that is four past papers to walk through, and each past paper, when I come up to a topic, I'll be explaining each topic. That is goal. People, in fact, in church today, there was another people from other church, and think them come in and they're like, hey, you are YouTuber, you help me pass physics and chemistry, or for them same two videos I'm telling you about. So, um, watch out, look out for that. Uh, after 52 seconds, the tank is two so determine the purpose. So, what we're going to do is actually work out how much. Because every second you're putting in 75 cm cube. So you're going to work out how much we put in then. After 52 seconds, so that's 52 times 75. You understand? So every second we add in 75. So after 52 seconds, we add in 75 times 52. So that's how much you put in. We, then we, when we get that answer, let me say we get 10. Obviously, you're not getting 10. This means 10 means two-fifths full. So if two-fifths mean 10, then to find out the full thing, it'll be 5 over 5. So it'll be 10 
divided by two fifths, multiply by five. It's like a fine for one thing now. So let me do all the question and, and you'll see. Alright, so let's look out after 52 seconds. After 52 seconds. How much water do we have? We'll have 52 times 75. And again, me answer 52 times 75. 3900. Yeah. So we have 3900 um, CMQ. That's how much. That's how much. This, that's this. That's this here. That is that. That's two fifths. So you have to work out the full capacity. It's going to be. So if this represents two fifths. Two fifths of the tank is equal to that 3900 zero, zero. then 5 fifths of the tank you'll have to divide by this divide by that and then multiply by 5 that's it or you can see 5 fifths it really means like 1 of the tank would be equal to So you know, multiply by five, multiply by five, and five one. Um, by sorry, five over two. Let's do it now, chair. Sorry, not five over two. Two over five. I want to say all again. Nine seven five zero. Nine seven five zero. Now see see people paying it in liters because they ask for it in liters. So very good on you all for doing that. Since they ask for it in liters, this here represents this came from a CM cube calculation. So all of this is CM cube. So now this is CM cube here. So if you want to change that to liters, you need to remember and this is our next little one little tiny thing that you need to remember. And if you don't know this, you lost max. One little tiny thing is that one thousand CM cube is equal to one liter. So therefore, if you want the answer in liters, it'll be nine, you have to divide by one thousand nine point seven five liters. And any building, thing, 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 thing. Are you going off on that curry chicken? Talking about curry chicken. Awesome. I don't know if I can see the. Where's the big screen? Where, where's my big screen? Awesome. That, that, um, that green screen knocking out everything. That looking real disgusting in that picture. But it actually is good. You know, is that? That's Jira chicken. Well, people from Ghana, when you say Jira chicken, they must say chicken Jira. That's some chicken Jira. Hey. Calculate the height in meters of the tank. Go ahead and do this part of the question. Calculate the height. Calculate the height in meters of the tank. You want the height in meters of the tank. A clue is you'll have to use the cross-sectional area. Well done, Anku. Well done. Anku is the speed star. When we should the add maths and the pure matter and pure, I hope you're speeding just so too.
<laughs> so anybody else? Okay, shall you get you for one forty seven? So how did they work it out? Well that's that's us pipe. Let me just get this drawing on the next page to explain this. So let's see now. I'll give you height and meters of the tank. This technique comes all the time. What technique am I talking about? The technique where they'll ask you about the volume of a prison and then ask you about the height. Or they'll ask you about the height and cross sectional area and ask you about the volume. You always need to know this volume of a prison and a prison is something like this. Or something, sorry, what, hey, 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 I don't want that. Oh, what is that? What is that? Or something like this. Or something like this. All of these are prisms. You have one, you have one surface, one surface, and it's gonna carry straight through down to the end. You have one regular sided, regular shaped object or polygon or face, and it carries right down to the end. It has uniform cross-sectional area. Uniform cross-sectional area. That is a prism, an object with uniform cross-sectional area running right through. And the volume of a prism is found by multiplying the cross-sectional area. So the volume of a prism is found by multiplying the cross-sectional area. And if you remember, we already found the cross-sectional area in the first part of the question. By the height. The volume of a prism is found by multiplying its cross-sectional area. So if you have a triangular prism, you have to find the area of the triangle and multiply by the height or the length of the prism, the length of the cross section. Uh, so this 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 word here could be length as well, depending on whether the prism prism line down on the ground like this. So you can make all kind of prisms with regular shapes. And guaranteed, they will ask you about that sometime in your maths exam, how to find the volume of a prism. But in this case, they're making it a little extra tricky. What happened is that. We just found the volume, we knew the cross-sectional area from way before, and then, what about the height? That's what they're asking you there. So, in other words, you need to see, you need to write that, then you'll write the volume which you found from before, which you found, and you write in meters, so they, they, they just, they just been out, they're out here just being ridiculous. So, they make a change it to liters, then they write in meters, and uh, all kind of thing. Right, so let go to let let we work in cm cube, and in the end we are just change our answers to meters. Cause to change cm cube to meter cube, not as straightforward as you think. Right, so cm cube, we put in mark this answer that we got here. Nine, where was nine seven five zero? Nine seven five zero. So people, everybody getting one point five. Nine seven five zero. Cross sectional area is all you remember that from before that's what we had to verify that, is, that cross sectional area is 65 and this here is the height so the height is equal to 9750 divided by 65 which is equal to now we need to be careful with this answer that we get here because this answer is actually in cm cube this answer is 150 one, this answer is in cm's. So 150 centimeters is 1.5 meters. And you do that to get two marks. So once again, this cannot be bluffed. You have to know. You cannot bluff your way through this. You can't be an algebra boss and just, you know, whistle dazzle every out of this. You need to know what you need to know. You need to know some formulas. So this is going to be a great class. 
and cool yeah, yeah, compliment me now by father <laughs> next question this Jew are taking this in real goodbye I should I take more the diagram below shows the channel PQR so right now I can just watch that diagram and the mm, good channel look how beautiful that triangle is This past paper is January 2018. January 2018. And I feel like I could done teach this, this class and just go and find back some other chicken. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This dude are taken by oh my gosh. Um I mean for the guy people who have no idea what I'm talking about, I mean chicken jira, chicken <laughs> The diagram below shows the triangle PQR. Wow, state the coordinates of R. It doesn't get easier than that, people. That's a free max day. Let me go and find what R is. R is zero on the X. And in between two and four, you, you put on your thinking cap. In between two and four must be three, boy. So zero, three. So that's what R is. Coordinates of R is zero, three. Make sure you put the X's. And the diagram above, draw the reflection in the line Y is equal to one. Right? So the important thing here is Y equal to one. And the important thing here is x, the line x is equal to 1. So we need to show what the line y is equal to 1 is. And for those who are here from day 1, you will know the line y equal to 1 is this line. Oh my gosh. Is this, oh my gosh. Is this line. Behave yourself now, brother. So this here is the line y is equal to 1. So if you want to reflect that there. Because you see all along this line, all along this line, the y will be 1. If I have a point here, this point is negative 4, 1. If I have a point here, this point is negative 1, 1. y is equal to 1 all along that blue line. So that's why we call that line, the line y is equal to 1. If we need to reflect, so this is the laws of reflection. So we'll, we'll do everything in basic reflection here. Um, you, when, you, when you draw your, your axis of reflection, the mirror line, as some people know, the it needs to be perpendicular. So in this line towards here needs to be perpendicular. And then it needs to carry on for the same. It needs to carry on for the same distance. So like you see this is one up. The reflection will be one down. So we can expect that the first point is here. That's point P. This is two up. So it needs to go two down. Understand? The, the same distance from the line of reflection. And this was on the same line here, so this goes up quite a five, so it will go down here. It went up one, two, three, four, it will go down four. One, two, three, four. I come that correct? Why are feeling so suspicious about that point? Right? And then you just draw in your new, your new spiffy triangle right there. Zoop, zap, zip. That's the new triangle there. Now, the point P is really P prime. This point R will be R prime. This point Q will be Q prime. We will never get the same exact question in CXE for paper two. In paper one, you will get the same exact question. If you have past people, they'll see the same exact question repeated. So, that is the answer, Daniel. Now, yeah, Anku is present. Anku is present. Now, our next thing we could do is, the next thing we have to do is the reflection of this in the line x is equal to zero. What's the line x is equal to zero, people? What is that line? Write that answer in the comment. What is the line that x is equal to zero? Another name for the line x is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. The 
9 x is equal to 0 is actually the y axis. Not the origin, the y axis. Not the x axis, the y axis. The line, y, the line x is equal to 0 is the y axis because all along this line, all along this line, x is going to be equal to 0. So who do you want to reflect in this line now? You want to reflect the, the new reflection and make our next reflection. Reflection section. So what will happen? This any point that's on the line, when you're reflecting, it will actually stay on the line. So you could just put R double prime there because this this point actually had a share. It had a share, it's on the line. You're going to be an X point too. You're going to be the new R. The new R in the block will actually be R double prime there. That is also that point because it's on the line of reflection. And remember, I say it had to be perpendicular to the line. So if P is 2 this way, P had to be 2 that way. So this is the new P. What about the new what about the new Q? 2 that way, 2 this way. So that's this line here. Well, so R prime and R double prime are the same. So now you just connect your dots. You connect your dots like a boss. That is, that is the new triangle here. And a good bit of marks, a good bit of marks spelled out for this. You collect five marks. That's nice. That's nice for just drawing. Alright, let's move on. Describe for the transformation that maps the last drawing we drew straight up to the first drawing we drew. So you're going from the last to the first. What is the transformation that will send this to that? Hmm. Right? Oh yeah, I, uh, okay. Hmm. Tell me what it is. I will not, I will not get some more juice. I will not get some more juice. I can't get no more juice, I don't know at home, but I'm going to get some more juice. So, uh, let's tell me what kind of transformation you think. What kind of transformation you think send that today? What is the transformation? Do just tell me um, glide, do just tell me rotation, do just tell me, tell me exactly. So, if you say rotation, you need to see the direction and you need to see the center of rotation. Last time I didn't see that. You need to see the center, you need to see the direction. If you see... If you see glide, you need to see what it is. Come back now. Don't forget to press like on the video. So let go to some more people. Press like on the video. And if you're wrong here, press subscribe and hit the notification bell. Especially the admats people. So we, we, we agree. It's an anti-clockwise rotation of 180 degrees, but nobody's seeing the center of rotation, though. I see what... 
Then see one person see where the center rotation is. So all of you that just get all of you that just get one mark boy. So uh, this is a clue here. So some people using two transformations to link it. They want one transformation. So everybody could slide it and then flip it in a line. But that didn't that ain't work. They plan for you. So everybody who say rotation, get one mark. Everybody who say rotation 180 degrees, get two marks. To get the full three marks, you need to find the center of the rotation too. And everybody who's find the center of the rotation now, which is actually here. Why right, this diagram so messy, man? Well, we yeah, just go. We had to commit to this messy diagram. The center of rotation is here. And you could see that. So, like, if you if you if it's hard to find the center of rotation, stand back, people. Stand back. I'm about to share with you how to find the center of rotation. Very key stuff here. If you need to find the center of rotation, I run out of colors. What other color I use here, boy? Purple. If you need to find the center of rotation, my friends, I'm gonna get rid of some of these arrows because we are about to do we are about to do the unthinkable here. To find the center of rotation, you connect like P. You connect them, P double prime to P, and you connect R to R, and you see where they intersect. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. Center of rotation. If you're confused, you gotta wait until you get your done and roll back. Cause if you if you just come in and you're confused, you gotta roll back. So that's how you find the center of rotation. You connect them points and you'll be able to find the center of rotation. You connect the two points to each other and you'll be able to find the center of rotation. So the center of rotation is indeed zero one. So the, the single transformation is a rotation. 180 degrees it could be clockwise or anti-clockwise I, I explain that when, once it's 180 degrees they don't really care if you say clockwise or anti-clockwise because they're gonna be the same place if you go if you turn around to the right 180 degrees and you turn around to the left 180 you're gonna end up in the same spot but like if it was 90 degrees it's important to say whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise and also where we just say clockwise for, for kicks clockwise it doesn't matter if it's clockwise or anti-clockwise and you also need to say about the point, or you could write center rotation is zero one. This point that we just find there. All right, so that is actually all of rotation explained there, and a good bit of reflection was explained there as well. The only thing I didn't explain is enlargement, which is the next question. <laughs> Triangle PQ around the goes and enlargement of scale factor two. Calculate your average image. So something interesting going on play off here. So pay attention. What people will do is find the area of the first triangle and multiply by two. That's wrong. That's not how scale factors is working. A scale factor mean means that you're multiplying lengths and heights and sides. You're multiplying linear dimensions. So the area will actually get multiplied by double that. Let me show you what I mean. So everybody will be able to find the area of this triangle. The area of this triangle is 3. But you can see 1, 2, 3. Or you can just work out the area of the triangle via... <clears throat> Let's find the area of the triangle via something that makes sense. Area is equal to half base by height. If we use this as the base, you get 3 units. Half. Because uh, all of the tri these tri three triangles have the same area, right? Half, um, the base is 3, times the height is 2. Because the height will be perpendicular now. Hopefully, everybody with me there. Half base by... Half base by height. So, 2, two cancels. So, the area is 3. 3 square units. Um, and... Three square units, and you could use whatever units this was. If it was centimeters, it's three cm squared, right? Or if, it's, if they didn't give you a unit, it's three square units. You're actually right. Right. So now, if you on if you enlarge this by two, what will happen? Which one are you enlarging in, by the way? 
the PQR, okay? So if we enlarge this by 2, this will go to here. This will actually go all the way up to somewhere there. This will go here. Everything will get multiplied by 2. The base and the height will get, and the height will get multiplied by 2. So the area of the new triangle will be half and not 3. It will be 6 times 4. So the area of this new triangle will actually be 12. What do you think about that? So instead of going from 3 to 6, it went from 3 to 12. 12 square units. And that's a, that's, that's a mistake that everybody do. So they, they find the area of the first triangle. Most people find the area of the first triangle. They find the area of this to be 3. Some people guess the area of that by just using the, the blocks. Mm, whatever. But um, better to use the half base by height that I just did. And then they multiply by 2 because they say scale factor is 2. So they go on to 6. The area of the, the image is 6. 6 cm squared. Well, it's not. It's actually 12. And I just explain why it's actually 12. Right? They go forward. So tonight, as I said, tonight is tonight is for the real. It's the real. It's the real. It's 11.34 already. Most likely we're going to end up 1 o'clock. So, a little brace a little. But I know we have some people, some diehards who are taking it down to the hour, down to the, down to the hour. If your eye closing, you need to get some juice. You need to get an apple and you need to eat an apple. <laughs> or you need some jira chicken. Right? Go and drink some ice water and crunch the ice. <laughs> Statistics. The, the 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 marks obtained by ten students in a test die hard. I thought it was die hard. The marks obtained by ten students in a test scored out of sixty are shown below. For the data above, determine the range. The range. So we in the statistics realm now. The range is the highest value. Take away the lowest value. So I'll just put the range and tell me. Highest value was what? What's the highest value we've seen here? 45? 45? Take away. What's the lowest value we've seen? 26? So we're looking at 19. So the range is 19. So scored out, score out of 60. So that's like max. So if you wake up at 19 max. Thank you. Oh, in your mind, every time I write an answer, I was thinking, what unit is this, boy? So you are always scared of that kind of thinking. Alright. Um, the median. The median just means what goes in the middle. So you need to arrange this in order. So alright, 26. Anytime you're doing this, cross out. Be like in primary school and cross out as you're writing. Cross out. Because you will make a mistake if you don't do that. Trust me. Even the boss of the bosses make mistakes. 26. What was next? 29. The median means the one in the middle. Why is somebody saying 26? So that's a little bit. 37.5. That will get for the median. Alright, we'll see. We'll see. 26. 31. 35. 38. 31. 35. 38. And I saw two more 38's lime in there. So if that's about more than one going on top. 1, 2, and then 42, 45. So you begin crossing out and you cross out like this. Bap, bap. Bap, bap. Tap, bap. Tap, tap. That's the median. If you ended up with two things in the middle, I miss out at 37. You see why it's, you see why it's cross out? You see, you see why it has cross out? So when you go back here and you see that 37 with no line through it, you know, he's a possibility. So he would have been here now. Eh? Come back, come back, come back, come back. My iPad shutting down. My iPad like no more live, bro. Alright, iPad no crash. That's why I love this iPad. This iPad going on for four years now and it's just weekend. Right? 
Alright, so I end up with these two in the middle. So, good. I'm glad I end up with that extra thing in the middle because you get to remember that. If you end up with anything in the middle, you add them up and you divide by 2. So you get 37.5. Okay. Alright, so that's the median mark, 37.5. The interquartile range, what the heck is that? So what is the interquartile range, people? So let me explain the interquartile range for you. There's a formula, and there's the logical way to do it. 26. Add maths people, for sure, for sure, they don't know the formula. But it's important that you know the logical way as well. So you need to know what is quartiles as well. So people pay answers and think Q3 and Q3. What is? It? Some people don't know what it is. So data can be divided up into four spots. You see the median what we just find? That is actually called the second quartile. The first quartile is here. The first quartile is the median of the first half of data. The second quartile is the median of the second half of data. So this here is Q1, Q1, and this here is Q3, sorry. The third quartile is the median of the third, the third segment of the data. Up, up, there, there. So that is the third, that, that set of the data there, that is the third quartile. The first quartile, way over, so, is... Like if you if you cut off half of the data and you deal with that piece and you find the median of that piece, that's the first quarter. That's what quarter is all about. Right? So we can watch this here and see that we have one, two, three, four, five. When you have an odd number, well this straight up is here is the median. Now I have seen with my own two eyes CXE do quartiles two different ways and get two different answers. And one of these specimen people I've seen them do it in a similar way to this. And then in another one of these specimen people, I see them do it at add math styling, where you add one to the number of um, elements you have, and you divide by four. And then you get the answer for the quartile one and stuff like that. Or you divide by three over four. So, whatever way you learn it, stick to that. But it's, the best thing I find to do is use, the, use a natural method like this. Because this is this this is exactly what quartile is talking about. A quartile, the first quartile is the median of the first half of the data. That's that's the definition of quartile. There. This the second quartile is the median of the entire data. So Q2 is actually the median. The third quartile is the median of the last half of the data. So from this that from this you could e immediately see. 31 is the first quartile, and 38 is the second, is the third quartile. So if you want to find the interquartile range, you put Q3 minus Q2. The interquartile range is the third quartile minus the first quartile. Q3 minus, and it's quartile because it divides the data into four, four parts. One, two, three, four, right? Quart, quarter, quartile. So 38 minus 31 equals seven. So the interquartile range is seven marks, right? Now if you use the formula method, which I'm not going to talk about, when I when I do the math, I talk about that. You you will see you could sometimes get a different answer. And there's two formulas. There's a formula for when you have odd an odd number of data and when you have an even number of data. Let's move on. The probability that a student chose not random scores less than half the total marks in the test. So you need to find how much students scored less than half. You need to go through the data and see how many students scored less, less than half. So the probability, excuse me, so this is students, this is the number of students scored less than half. Hopefully I see now I kinda write in like real bad. 
and this is the total number of students of students here. So the probability, let's see the number of students is called less than half. How many students? What is half by the way? If it's 60, half is 30. So you're looking for anybody who's called less than half. Let me see if they mean less than half or half and less. So it has to be less than half. So if they score 30, they're safe. They'll pass. Right. And nobody scored 30 anymore. So one, two. Only two score less than half. And it's how many? How, how much people? Ten. Wait, everybody done for the answer. And I, I, I behind time. Ten over two is equal to one fifth. So you could express a probability as a fraction or as a percentage. Even as a decimal sometimes. So uh, one fifth or twenty percent. So the twenty percent chance that this person scored less than half. But one fifth is cool. Move on. So this is this is a nice little frequency polygon you're going to have to draw here. So just take a look at that. Remember we're doing what are we doing here, boy? We're doing January 2018. And we reached the question seven. So using a scale of two centimeters, so I had to draw a graph here. So they get to see my you know, graph drawing, my finger graph drawing skills. Um Everybody good? 100 people still on more. We climb back up to 100 people. Well done. Um, the frequency distribution below show the masses in kilogram of 50 adults prior to the start of a fitness program. La, da, 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 da. So a, a little important thing to note here is that we have we have kind of like group data here with a frequency. So we get to look at how group data is treated in a frequency table. And they already get the midpoint, which is nice. Because in a frequency polygon, we deal with midpoints. You understand? When you plot in a frequency polygon, we deal with midpoints. If you plot in a cumulative frequency, we deal with boundaries, the class boundary. And we're going to do a cumulative frequency tonight. The ending, the last, the upper class boundary, that is what, that is what we'll deal with if we're doing a cumulative frequency. But if we are doing a frequency polygon, we deal with midpoint. Ah, all right, let's go. So you have a midpoint, you have a frequency. I'm going to plot this, this, this graph. And I'm, I'm, I'm only human, so I know what it is to see a graph and feel like, oh, the pain. I don't even want to practice that. When it comes to the exam, I can just draw the graph. But it's important to practice drawing your graphs because you can run into some problems with your scale that you wouldn't foresee. So it's better to practice drawing your graphs and learn how to figure out your scales and things now than in the exam you running into problems and trying to uh, problem solve in your exam. Practice drawing your graphs. So you need to know how to use your scale here. I wouldn't really have a scale because I mean, I just drawing it. No finger, I'm not using a regular. Using a scale of two cents. Enough talk, let's get on to this graph. So yeah, we plot in midpoint and frequency. I'm breaking up. Anybody, everybody see me good? Um, just say yeah, man. If you if you get any audio good, everything running good. And I'm going ahead and I'm going ahead and put that graph. So just say yeah, man. Once you once you see me good. Whoop 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 So everybody see me good, right? Um, once one unit any y-axis during frequency. Using a scale of two centimeters to represent five units on the x-axis and one centimeter to represent one unit on the y-axis. So what you need to do after you organize a graph, you need to see, you need to always check which where, how high it's going. And hmm. This graph will very likely be a split graph because it starts off at 62. And they already tell it to use a pretty wide scale. So you see that this graph split, right? Um, on a scale of one centimeter to represent one unit. Alright, so now the idea polygon carries the idea that when you draw a thing, wherever, it must come back down and come make a complete shape. But that doesn't always have to be the case. It's not very rigid. In a scale of two centimeters to represent five units. Why well, I keep reading that same one sentence so far? Like I, like I just 
you want to draw this graph. All right, it starts off at 62 and it reach up, reaches up to 87. 62 to 87. Just now, let me just take a look at my graph from before. Frequency. The thing, the thing with the frequency polygon, we usually put the frequency on the y-axis. Alright, let's go, let's go. We're going up to 50. This graph has no negative spots, so looking like this. All right, Katina, if you had to go, you had to go. Make sure and stay healthy, eat well, exercise good. Um, we're going up to 15 from zero. So 5, 10, 15. better than that. Make these points a little smaller. One, two, three, four. I can still do better than that. Let me not waste time on this. One, two, three, four. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I always admire the dedication to sit down and watch me draw this graph. Zero. Five. 10, 15. Mm, ah. If your eyes dim and take a walk, drink a drink, think, come back, walk around with your phone, try and get some more vibes. Um, just going up to 87, start at 62. Yeah, so let me start at 60 and go up to 90. So, this is 60 here, uh, or if you want, you could you could actually draw a break. Why do you not take out some of my things? You can actually draw a break here, like this, and start your 60 here. But, I know about our life. So 60. Ah, uh, 70. I hate to draw this right now, but we have to do it. 90. Sometimes you gotta do things you don't like to do to get where you want to be. Alright, 60. So this is 65. 70. 75. 80. 90. Mm, yeah. Yes, yeah, cyanide to all the people that have to roll out. So 62 to 87. All right, we now get now. So now we join 62 and 84. 62 and 62 and 8, sorry. We got a nice thing here. So we look for 62 and we look for 8. And then next up we have 67, 11. So 67 is somewhere about, about here. So I I will definitely need to put in the little spots in between there too if I was drawing this graph. Thing. Um, 11. We have not drawn accurate 72, 15, 77, 9, 72, 15, 72 goes all the way up to 15, 77, 9, around there, so, and 82, 5, and 87, 2, 82, 5, 
Alright, right, so yeah. Connect them thing and there is a frequency polygon, you know? Just like that. Yeah, all they do want to be connected. You know? So your frequency polygon is not a curve. It's actually straight lines between the points. So that's the whole thing about a frequency polygon. Woo! That's a frequency polygon. Six max. So you gotta make sure and put in your you ain't going to do all of that and lost max because you ain't right frequency here. Which really means, um, well, they use frequency, so you could there. And on the next axis, you write mass. And you put dash and you put kilograms. So, and then you put a title here. Because you want to be complete graph of blah 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 here okay, just put graph of um, distribution of mass just just anything just so that you have a title distribution of masses and again you practice are writing your scale as well especially if you have to make up the scale you write your scale so you write the scale where you, what they give you here which is this and this so one unit you call that so you write your scale and that's the entire graph there Make sure you have everything written in a proper way. You see these two two elements here? This is especially for those who feel like they're getting the one or two and they want to make sure everything looking prim and proper. Title and scale. Alright. To 57. Come back down to 57. Come back down to 57. They keep saying that about a frequency polygon. One teacher told me that. Same thing. I understand. I hear you. But in certain textbooks and in certain areas, they don't have the closing of the polygon. Right? If you want to be really, really accurate at it, you, you go up. So you'll have between... 59 and 55 so this is 57 and this will be 0 and that's why you use to close the polygon you have 90 to 94 so you have 92 and this will be 0 and that's why you use to close the polygon there so this will go down and this will go down so I would have need to make a little more allocation in my graph but as I said, some textbooks don't have it. Um, and one of these specific ones, some some paper somewhere I saw it in CXE didn't have it, and some paper I saw it had it. So uh, I tell you, yes, they're not really standard in this. I don't have a complete answer in this. But some places say close. Some teachers, a teacher told me I need to close my, pol my, my polygon, and then I see that it was open in certain things. And and next thing I saw is CXE actually drew a frequency polygon in a question and it was open. So that's why I, that's why I was like, I didn't really need to close the polygon. But if you want to be all prim and proper about it, close your polygon. I can't say a hundred percent if they'll penalize you for that. I don't think they would. That's my thing. I wish I had a CSEC um mark and script or something for that but as i said i saw it in one of the questions that it didn't close it and i saw it in a answer some answer thing that they gave out that they sent back to teachers I re they, when they do the exam they send back stuff to teachers and they didn't close it so let me now waste time talking about that um john's monthly electrical bill i pull back this a meter reading question from question one because and we didn't do this last time and i think we should do this because i just think we should do this the monthly electrical bill is based on kilowatt hours. So I'll start, I'll start to move a little faster, right, people? I'll start to be pumping a little more. Um, okay. He is charged $5.1 per kilowatt hours for the month of 
March 2016 to meter readings are displayed in the table below. Calculate the amount of so you need to calculate the electricity. This, so this is how meter readings work. This was for at the start of March, and this is the reading for the ending of March. People, let's see the, these numbers, and it's just a number. It's just a number. This is really 3011, and this is really 3307 kilowatt hours, right? So this is how much kilowatt hours he used up to that point, and he used some more. He just used some more. It looked like he used uh, nearly 300 more, a little less than 300 more. So calculate the total amount that John pays for electrical consumption for things. So you need to calculate how much kilowatt hours used. Kilowatt hours used would be equal to the final amount and it, they, they usually say one month and next month and then you find out and then they get another month how much you would need to use to reach that next month okay so three three zero one one and everybody get the answer already three three zero seven take away three zero one one two nine six so that's how much kilowatt hours used so the cost because that's where you really want to find yeah multi pays it will be 296 times how much per kilowatt hour away? 5.1. 5.10. So the electricity bill coming in hot. Imagine paying 1500. Well, in Trinidad, the electricity bill does be kind of down that way. 5.1 because gas is cheap. And my Guyanese, the Guyanese people, them, are they finding one star natural gas over there? But I might have to move to Guyana just now. Are they getting out a hand with all our natural gas and they find it? So this is how much it is. Everybody is correct. So um, the next part where they will take this question, I don't know if I put it here. Yeah, so let me do it. For the next month, John pays this amount. Oh, by the way, sometimes you may have an additional cost, like a rent, a standard cost. So like the rent might be what? $100. So anytime you work it out, after you get it, you'll need to add $100 to it. That's how the question usually comes. Like there's a rental fee, maybe for the meter, or something or a standard fixed cost that come in every every month that sometimes happens that usually happens in this kind of question it didn't happen in this part but it usually happens so if John pays this amount for electrical consumption the next time they want you to find out his meter reading so you need to do some things you need to divide this now if it had a rent cost you had to take away the hundred for then divide and it's take away the rent cost but there's no rental cost so you divide this find out how much kilowatt hours was used, then add it back. So people already look like they're pulling down answers there. So, oh, whoa, he bill going up. So so maybe he leave he leave his iron on or some kind of thing. So that's what I was used would be equal to 2351.10 divided by 5. Because it divided by the cost of 1 kilowatt hour, 5.10. And this tells us that he used, this, this month he used a little more boy. He used 235. 1.1 divided by 5.1, which is 461 kilowatt hours. Yo, know, they're using only kilowatt hours. And then, so you need to add this. So the, the, the new meter reading, what year is this? This is, this is May 20, I feel in, a 20, I feel in 2017. I feel in like this May 2017. Feeling like this May 2017. I didn't write on the year, but yeah. Look at look for May 2017 and you, you, you should see that this is the year. So you need to add the old reading plus the kilowatt hours used. Because you need to add how much he had last time and add on the new set. So how much he had last last time? The last thing was 3307. 3307 plus 461 he used. So I just use doing this so you all will have this in inside as well. Everybody in the study session will have this inside. 3768. 3768 um, is the new meter reading. Well, uh, you need to write it, you need to write the meter you need to write the meter reading like how they had it here. That is zero first now. And it'd be all professional about it. Now. So zero three seven six eight and this is in kilowatt hours so that's how much kilowatt hours he used for the whole lifetime eh? for since he had that meter that's how much kilowatt hours he used 
All right, and most meters will have an extra zero here because they don't want to run, they infin they don't want to run out of zeros. They want to have to replace that meter too quickly. All right. Here is the coordinate geometry question that I say we had to do. This is with a line, and the two lines meet perpendicularly. Perpendicularly. The two lines meet. The two lines are perpendicular to each other. So we do this question. Calculate the gradients of the two lines. So to calculate the gradient of the line, <coughs> excuse, you have to find two points on the line. So I will I will select some two points for you all. Let me just plug it in. You're looking for nice points. I'm looking for nice, nice, nice looking points. There's a nice point there. That point is zero, one. Beautiful, beautiful. And there's a point that's up there. Yeah, this point up here. Because you try to select points that are far from each other. This point here is six, thirteen. So we can calculate the gradient of that line. Somebody rush that and do that for us. Then this this point up here is zero six. That's the that's the next line, right? Because we're gonna calculate the gradient of the next the two lines. So we're using points that are kind of far from each other, but easy simple points I can see. Zero six. And uh, let's find another point. Yeah, here's another point. This is this is ten one. Yeah, rise over run, rise over run. Change in y over change in x. So the formula. So everybody getting two. The formula for the gradient is equal to, and you know m stands for gradient. M is the symbol we we use traditionally in maths for gradient. So this is we we'll call this m1, where m1 is the gradient of this line. Gradient of l1. And everybody get two, and then. Um, so you get you get 13 minus 1 and 6 minus 0. 6 minus 0. So you get 12 over 6, which is 2. There's no units for gradient most of the times. <coughs> now, if you have units on two axes, you'd have put the y unit over the x unit, and that'll be a gradient. So like if you have a distance time graph, the unit of the gradient will be speed. If you have a speed time graph, the unit of the acceleration. All right, um, or meters per second squared. Same thing as acceleration. If you had um, a distance time graph, the units would be meters per second, which is speed, or kilometers per hour, same thing, speed. All right, so the, the gradient of the next one now, so you can see this looking like two. That's how the two, our two gradients just look. This one will have to be a negative gradient because we're going to the next one. So people get negative 0 0.5, that's something good. Um, um, all right. So M2. Be equal to one takeaway six. M two is a different guy. One takeaway six over. In other words, I'm making this y two and x two. I'm making this x one and y one. You can do that to help you see away better. Ten takeaway zero. So I'll end up with negative 5 over 10, so it's negative 0.5, or negative a half. You try to leave your answers in fractions. Okay, let's move on. Determine the equation of line L1. Well, you just use a point on the line and the gradient. So you're going to see how we do this. 0, 1. Uh, uh, so this is a point on the line, and the gradient is 2. And the formula, the almighty formula, and I have, a, I have an excellent video on coordinate geometry. I think people are asking me about it. I, I need to label some of my videos better so you can easily pop it up. But once you search a topic, it's in the tag. So like if you search Cohen's Spring and coordinate geometry, the first video that come up, even if you don't see coordinate geometry in the title, I did coordinate geometry in that. So I have a real good one on coordinate geometry with all the stuff in coordinate geometry, right? Um, so you're using... The, 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 the big formula that everybody wants to use is y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1, right? So this is the formula, and you have a point in it and, and a thing, so you say y minus, and this is the y1. m2 into x, x minus x1 in this case is 0. So the answer is y is equal to 2x plus 1, because 2 by x is x. Let me just work it out so clearly so you can see what's happening here. 
y minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 0, because 2 by 0 is 0. Um, bring across the 1, now it will be 2x plus 1, because 1 plus 0, right? So this is the equation of line 1. What is the relationship between line 1 and line 2? Give a reason for your answer. Well, it's perpendicular. Since m1 is equal to negative 1 over m2. You understand? Perpendicular lines are like this. If you have one gradient being 3, the other gradient will be negative at 2. If you have if you have if you have one gradient was let me see one of the gradients was 2 on 3, the next gradient will be 3 over 2, the negative of that. So you invert it and a negative. So it's the negative reciprocal. So the lines are perpendicular because their gradients are the negative. Uh, the negative reciprocal of each other, the negative inverse, multiplicative inverse of each other, right? Since one was two and the next one was negative a half, so um, ah, no, you can't write that. You can't write it like that. Since m one is two and m2 is negative a half. If you plug it into that, you'll get it being equal. Alright, so that is why. Right, we lost some people, we lost some people. Where's the time now? 12 o'clock. When 12 o'clock, which we lost some people. Now we get to see the real hardcore people inside here. Okay, new question. So, as I said, we're doing like the middle part of the mathematics. So it have a little bit of geometry in it. I didn't take it out. Um, but the next day, tomorrow, from 9, we're doing geometry and geometry, what everybody has been waiting for. So we're going to be doing circle terms, and we're going to be doing bearings and angle of elevation. All right, but there's a little bit of this here. Determine, without reason, or determine, given a reason, for each of these steps of your answer, the measure of angle RQT. What is RQT? What is RQT, people? Twenty-eight degrees. What's the reason now? Give a reason why RQT is twenty-eight degrees. Well, the reason being that this is an isosceles triangle, and if these two, if these two sides are equal, it means that these two angles here, the base angles, have to be equal. So this is seventy-six as well. So if this is 76, and that is 76. <laughs> so this is an isosceles triangle, which means the angles at the bottom, QRT is equal to QTR, which is equal to 76. Therefore, the angle RQ2, RQT, would be equal to 180 degrees. Take away this 2. 2 times 76. 2 times 76, not 76 and 2. Right, Christoph? 2 times 76. Oh, somebody has it. What? What was that? Was that? Um, 180. Why well, are they different answers for me? 2 times 76. 28. So, how someone they get 52? What? Are they working on the next one or something? 52 76 76 It's 28 Where did 52 come on from? Explain that 52 though Anyhow, whatever, 28 degrees How you get the 52? Oh! Maybe you all put 52 and 52 here yeah, that was a common mistake. So I now understand how they get 52. They put 52 here and they put 52 here. But do, these two are not e these two angles are not equal. Remember, we had to watch which side equal. If these two sides equal, it means that these two are the equal angles. So I catch how you get the, I get I catch how you get the 52. All right? So let's let's go forward. Angle PRT. What is angle PRT? 
Next one is 90. Hmm. PRT. So again, PRT. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 Alright. So once you in these kind of questions as again anything start to write in the answers that you got, right? So this is twenty-eight. If this is twenty-eight, it means via the one hundred and eighty degrees, here would be one hundred and fifty. Two. So if this is 152, it means these two angles need to shape up the remaining to make back up a triangle which is 180. So they matter shape up the 28 then. So it means that this angle up here is 14 and this is 14. Remember the angle, the next angle that I want us to find is this one here. So now we can find it. Angle, angle PRT. It's going to be equal to the 14 plus the 76, which is 90 degrees. So don't forget to state the reasons how you get these initial angles here, right? With the isosceles triangle and all the angles in a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So 90 degrees is correct. Well done to all the 90 degrees people. So we got this. This is 90 degrees. Angle SPT, given that SRT, oh, they gave me some more new information here. SRT is 145 and PSR. Is one for SRT. SRT. So this whole angle here is 145 and PSR is 100. So this is 100. So I already seen a kind of I seen an angle here, angle here, angle here. So if they were we to find what? Angle SPT, we will we are use a quadrilateral idea. No, just to find this angle here, angle SPT, that's this angle here, no, just to find that guy. So it's simple, angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360, and there's an next little thing you need to know, all the angles in a four-sided shape add up to, the angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360. I am sure there's another way you can figure it out as well. But I think it's... I think it's simple this way. I think people are talking about kind of thing in the chat. Hopefully, I'll know what they're talking about. I think this is not 900, this is 900, and um, this is 90 degrees. I think the simplest thing to do for this one is to 360 take away all these other angles in the, um, in the quadrilateral. We have 76, we have 145, and we have 100. 76, 145, and 100. So you do that, and you get the answer there. So 360. Take away 76 plus 145 plus 100. 39. It's a little suspicious. Let me just check and make sure I'm looking like at 39. Yeah, because if this is 14 and this, this here would be yeah, some little kind of small angle thing. Eh? Yeah, and next thing you could do, the next thing you could do is if you know this is 145. You can find out what this angle was, and you know this angle, so then you can find out what this angle is, and then you can find out. You understand? It has different ways you can find it out. So you must know your angle, you must know your angle game. So we get 39, cool. The diagram below shows the triangle ABC. We're going to do our next transformation here. We're starting to pick up the speed of people, we're picking up the speed. We need late we need we need final half, we need final section here. So we're picking up the speed. The diagram below shows a uh, Triangle ABC and its image A B prime C prime blah 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 and a single transformation. So you watch that you take it in. Okay, what's the transformation taking place here? What transformation? Rotation of 90 degrees. I'm and done down on this already. Rotation 90 degrees clockwise. Everybody see the everybody done on onto the question already. Alright, but you're missing one key thing. You wouldn't get the full marks on nobody and get the full marks yet. Because you're missing one key thing. And only will go in the exam and lose this one mark and get 
and get my man in it. Go and get collect all your marks in. Yeah, at zero zero. Yes, man. You must see the spotted rotating on. Zero one, no, zero zero. Center zero. Origin. Origin is the word you're looking for. Origin. About the origin. So 90 degrees clap is about the origin. Anybody here know how to find the center of rotation? No, in this you can actually just watch it and see. Yeah, it rotate like this. It rotate and 90 degrees about about this point. So you can you can you can spot that. You can spot that. But what about if you can easily spot the center of rotation? What is the method for finding the center of rotation? Anybody know? Anybody can write it in the comments. I'm giving you all all of 40 seconds to see if you can figure out how you find the center of rotation. Maliki get block. Ah, sorry. Let me see if I can. Let's see if I can fix that. I can't right now. I'm sorry. Alright. Yeah, if you send too much weird messages, they, they block your thing. Two pendicular bisector Roshan. I hear from you in a while, but you're talking sense. What do you mean by perpendicular by bisector? C with C prime and A with A prime. Idris, Idris and Rusha need to come together and they will have the correct answer there. Connect corresponding points. Yes, and do what? And do what? Connect the corresponding points and do what? After you get the corresponding points, what do you do? Alright. Match the points, find the center, draw a line from C with C, extend till the intersect. Janelle kinda connect corresponding points and extend. Okay, so if I connect the corris corresponding points, I might do what I'm saying to do. I connect in B with B. I connect C with C. If I extend till they intersect, it's it not going to get me the center. It's not going to get me the center rotation. So how do you find the center rotation? Um, so just to organize the messages a little better, I put in somebody who are seeing here all the time. Boom! I just make your moderator there, Elisha. For tonight, you had to do that work, right? So, you get some added work. Lovey, I see you in here all the time. So, boom. I call it, help each other out there. So, if anybody get blocked and they're not supposed to get blocked, because you know it's maths now, we pay numbers, you can just unblock them. Yeah, but don't go and block nobody else, you know, to sign really block anybody here. Right. So, you might not know what to do, but it's a moderator now. Alright, stay the cross point, see where they join, see where they intercept, draw a line, blah, blah, blah. They don't intercept anywhere. These lines, yes, they intercept. Like if I if I extend that they will intercept they will intercept somewhere here and that is not the center of rotation. So what you need to do is actually find the um Roshan said it. Find the center, find the center of each of these lines. But what you really want is the perpendicular bisector. So you bisect the lines using your and it is possible that they ask you this in CXE. You need to know how to do this. So using your compass, you bisect these lines. You draw a line like this. You bisect this line now. Like you stick a compass in here and you draw a curve there. You stick a compass in here and you draw a curve there. And now, the perpendicular bisector of each of those lines. I pretend that that, that was what happened there. Right? Okay, I'm going to fix it up a little better. The perpendicular bisector of each of those lines, you see in orange, it will come down and where that intersect, that is the center of enlargement. Everybody understand that? So you connect the two points, you find the perpendicular bisector, you extend those the perpendicular bisector, not the connection, the perpendicular bisector of the two points, and where it intersect, that is the center of rotation. Remember that, especially those who feel they're right in the maths and they want to learn the little fine-tuning points, this is the point that I slip on any reader, to find the center of rotation. So that's how we found the center of rotation there. But with this diagram, you can watch it and see it. All right. 
Moving on. Describe public digital transmission that maps triangle ABC to triangle ABC prime. So we did that already. Translation vector T maps this to that. So we need to just draw that. So in other words, it's going across by 4. It's going across by 4. And it's going down by negative 5. Understand? So all the points will go across by 4 and go down by negative 5. Which one are we doing that to? We're doing that to the image of the last transformation. Send it across by 4. So send across B by 4. So this is 1. So in, this is this is this is this point here. This is this is this is this point here is one. One one. So if we have to send that across by four, it'll become five. But we have to also send it down by five now. So it will become negative four. So we look at another point here. Right? So that's the new point. And once I find that new point, I can kinda just figure out where the rest is gonna be. Oh, no, 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 no. I can just verify that if I feel in paranoid in the exam. Then draw my triangle, my ugly little triangle there. Boom. Right? So that's the new triangle. Label it, make sure I label it. And collect remarks and we roll out. Next one. The area of the field. How do you find the area of a sector? How much more we had to go? That's how much more we had to go, people. That's how much more we had to go. And the sneak peek into the future. Eh? The diagram below, not just to see how much people we have. We have 77. Hopefully, we can make it past the finish line, past the 1 o'clock line, with 50 people still in two. Alright, so the diagram below, not joined to the scale, not joined to scale, shows a field in the shape of a sector with sector with center O and a diameter 2 at 10, 8. Angle POZ is 90 degrees. The area of the field. Find the area. You all go ahead and rush this question. The area of a sector. The area of sector, it can be CM, it can be, be CM squared, theta over 360 times pi r squared. So it's like the fraction, this, this part here is the fraction of the circle, this part is the area of the circle. Alright, so the area is equal to Area is equal to half. Oh, what well, I'm doing. So this is 90, is a quarter, right? 90 over 360 times pi r squared. So as we are quarter times pi, they tell me to use pi as 22 over 7. times r squared, r is, well the diameter is 28, so r is half of 28, don't forget to get half, eh? so 14, 1 times 14, 1, <sighs> we'll call that one again, everybody get 154, so 154 cm squared, let's make sure, 1 divided by 1 over 4, 1 over 4 times 22 times 154. Everybody correct. The perimeter of the field now. How do you find the perimeter of this? Well, you need to add up this, you need to add up this, and you need to add up that. So this could actually come in math, add math. This part here, the length of the arc plus 2 radius. So the perimeter is equal to the length of the arc. Length of arc plus 2 times the radius, right? So the length of the arc is... Same thing, theta over 360, but not pi r squared, will be 2 pi r, because that's how you find circumference, 2 pi r. So theta over 360 times 2 pi r, plus 2 times the radius, so 2 times r. So 
this is going to be once again 90 over 360 times 2 pi this the total so take that 20 over 7 r is 14 plus 2 times r 2 times 14 right which is which is 28 so you record this and tell me what you get So you get 22 plus 28, which is 50, 50 centimeters. Remember, to find the length of our arc, to find the length of the arc, we just found this part. So that is, that, that's, that's the first half we're doing there. That's, 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 that's this part of the question here. And then we also need to find this part here because we need to find the radius we need to find because they actually the whole perimeter they actually so it's the whole area around that sector right so hopefully everybody understand what happened there let's move forward the diagram below not joint to scale you see how often prism comes right the diagram below not joint to scale shows a triangle of prism <laughs> ABCDF cross section is the right angle triangle ABC where AB is 6 and BC is 10 so what do I need to find the volume the area of the triangle ABC area of a triangle area of the triangle is half base by height right but the height's not given but you immediately know that this is a 8 because this is really a 3 4 5 triangle Right? Once you see a right triangle in these kind of ratios, you're supposed to know the missing side. But if you don't if you didn't know you could you always use Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem states that C squared is equal to A squared. And we'll be doing a lot of this tomorrow. We'll be doing sine rule, cosine rule, everything tomorrow. So C squared, 10 squared will be equal to 6 squared plus b squared so b is going to be equal to 100 take away 36 which is 64 so that means b is the square root of 64 which is 8 right but you're supposed to be able to figure it out just so. so that is 8 so now you can find the area of the triangle the area of the triangle is equal to half base by height we can use the height as 10. That was a mistake people use. Use the height as 10. You have to actually find the height first. Half. The base is 6. The height is 8 now. So half by 6 by 8. Everybody getting 24. 24. And we have to make sure we, add, we put the square units, right? CM squared. What year am I doing? I think this is January 2017. January 2017, right? Jan 2017. Look it up, man. If not Jan, it's me. But we in 2017. <laughs> but we in 2017. Me 2017, well done. Right. The length of the prison, is, if the volume is, yes, remember I tell you this axis all the time. Watch, 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 watch. Uh, so we, we just going straight into this volume is equal to the cross-sectional area which we just found because that's the area of the triangle multiply by the length or the height whatever it is this time the prism line down so it's length if you're standing up it's height so it's equal to and we just found this to be 24 and they gave us the volume now because they want to be smart and the length is what we're trying to find, so now we call them L. This leaves L to be 540 divided by 24, which is... I ain't seen genius kid, I ain't seen love you earlier all day. Divided by 24. So you get, right, genius kid, well, 22.5. Uh, CM. 22.5 centimeters, because this is a length. Next question. The surface area of the prison. 
this is a tough one. So to see these surfaces here, the prison, you need to understand all what involved in the prison. When we have a triangle, and we have a triangle across here, so that's that's we we need to get those two areas. We already find the area of one triangle, so multiply that by two. We also have a rectangle line on top of the prison prism there. Black, that side. So as I say, you can't bluff this, you have to be able to see things. Then. You also have a rectangle at the base, and you also have a rectangle at the back. Right? So you have three rectangles and two triangles. So the area of the prism, this is the surface area. Surface area of the prism is equal to two times the area of the triangle plus you have the top rectangle. And let's paint it. Now that top rectangle is E. And you have the base rectangle. And you have the background rectangle. We call that C. So you have, we'll, we'll, we'll just put rectangle A, rectangle B, and rectangle C. Right? So let's look at what those, those things really stand for. We have 2 times the area of the triangle, which you already know is 24, plus somebody that worked it out already, you said what? So if it's area 5, uh, the area of the first, this, this first, this first thing is 10 by the length, which we just found to be, which we just found to be 22.5. So 10, by every one of those, every one of these rectangles multiplying by a length of 22.5. Plus, the base is 6 by 22.5, and the, because it's in 6, right? And the other one will be 8 by 22.5. So you have 6 by 22.5, and the other one will be 8 by 22.5. So everybody seems to be getting 588. 2 by 24, I like the kind of speed we're moving it right now. You have 48 plus 225 plus 6 times 22.5. Plus 8 times 22.5, 80. And you add it all up, and what do you get? 588. Everybody getting 588. Everybody understand what happened there? That's area, so we're going to put units to be squared. So let's try and put some units now. Man. Try and figure out a way to put units in there. CM squared, right? Next question. So we get to see a cumulative frequency now. Yeah, the table below shows the speed to the nearest kilometers per hour of 90 vehicles that pass a checkpoint. For the class interval 20 to 39, complete the following sentence. The upper class limit is that the class limit. Okay. Find the upper class limit. Now, you notice that you're seeing 0 and 19 here, and then go 20 and 39 here. So the limits, the limits is actually like these numbers here. So there's the lower limit, there's the upper limit. Lower limit, upper limit. If you're looking for boundaries, however, the boundaries, you take this guy and you take this guy and you find what's in between them. So if you have 19 and you have 20 on the number line, in between that exists a number called 19.5. And that's the boundary, my friend. All right, so we're looking at this interval, though, 20 to 39. Let's look at that interval. 20 to 39 interval. So in the 20 to 39 interval, the upper class limit is going to be 39. The class width. To find the class width, you must use the boundaries. The class width is the upper boundary. It's kind of weird, eh? The upper boundary. Well, the numbers come out from Minus the lower boundary. So the upper boundary is actually 39.5 minus the lower boundary is actually 19.5. And this will give us what? 20. 20. So don't get any other way answer, please. 20. 
So that's your class width, that's your upper class limit there. Everybody good there? Community frequency in the dance. Oh, we had to complete the table. That's where all them numbers come out from. My bad, my bad. Did they ask to do that? Complete the... Nowhere to tell. We to complete any table yet. Bam. Complete the, t complete the table. Show my is it in the missing values. Okay, let me complete the table. Man. All right. So when you're completing, this is how this is. 5, 5. 5 plus 11, 16. 16 plus 26, something. 16 plus 26, 2, 42. So what numbers are there? 42, 79, 88, 90. Well done, people. Well done. So we speed in. <laughs> yeah, we speed in. If I need to go slow, I'll let me know, but I find we're going fast and everybody seems to be pelting out answers. So I go in at whatever rate and they're going at. So if I start to go faster, I'll go faster, right? Um 16 vehicle. Wait now, did the last slide? We speed out to the end. We speed out to the end. So I'll just explain. A few concepts that I think y'all should look at at the end here, right? So, um, before we bust it, before we go and sleep. All right, 16 vehicles passed a checkpoint at no more than... So, 16 vehicles passed a checkpoint at no more than... But in the world are they talking about there? 16 vehicles passed a checkpoint at no more than... Let's go and see. 16 vehicles passed a checkpoint at no more than... No. You had to use the boundary. You can use the limit. Because this here could actually mean that our vehicle was actually trapped there at 39.1 or 39.2. So 16 vehicles. I feel like I never see this question in my life. 16 vehicles pass a checkpoint at no more than 39.5 kilometers per hour. You had to use the boundary. Remember, the boundary is like the full invisible extension. The class width is like you have the. um. You have 20 to 39, 20 to 39, I did class it, but it has some imaginary numbers here going a little more, 19.5, outside each of them, and that's the boundary. That is the real thing, that is what, because it might have, it might have people lying on the outside of that, right? So it's actually 39.5. Alright, so, be careful with that. We already do this, and the grid provided. They already paying your units here, so you don't worry about that. And the grid provided on page, da, 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 draw a cumulative frequency table. So after we draw this cumulative frequency curve, not table, to represent the information in table, we would be nearly done for tonight. So let's go ahead and draw this. So you could go ahead and draw this yourself. In the meanwhile, I'm going to press this play add button. Anybody get any ads, boy? Why are they not getting no ads, boy? Make some money. Make some money. YouTube. Come on now. Um, and the grid provided on page anyone using a scale. I hungry. I also need to stop breaking up my messages so I won't be able to type. Did not know that. Da, 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 it's supposed to look fine. No, 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 Hey, I can't wait. Shania, hold out now. Hold out for 15 minutes. Let's pretend this is a rare real interesting conversation in your DMs or something. I don't know. Just hold on for 15 minutes. Let me see. Let's draw this very quickly. Let's see any roadblocks that could happen when you're drawing a frequency. Thing. So immediately you need to know that the frequency is going on the y-axis. Most of the time frequency goes on the y-axis and then something weird happens. You'll be plotting this. Um, the, the plots that you'll have to use to make your frequency will be the class boundaries. So you could immediately come down and write in, right, right next to this 19.5 so you could remember that one time. You need to show that you, you're plotting the boundaries. They actually need to see that it looks like it's off by a little bit. So you'll have grid lines, you need to show that you use 0.5 off. You need to show that, right? 79.5, you're using the upper class boundaries. 99.5, 119.5. But Shania, if you had to go, you had to go, yeah? if you had to go, you had to go. Don't let me keep your back, but I know you can grind it out, you can grind it out. Um, I'm just going to create a new page here. Boom. Um, it went from it went from zero straight to we are going from we going from zero to ninety. So ten, twenty, thirty, 
Oh, this is horrible. Whew, that's the way it's happening. 20, 30, 40, 50. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. 10, 20, 30. Come on, we can do this. 40, 50. Oh, let me make it now. 60, 70, 80, 90. All right, so let me make it. So let me make it. Then, yeah, so we went from 0 to 90. So that's your plot out. They didn't give you a scale. They didn't give you a scale. Yeah, they give you a scale here. So you didn't have to hot up your head. So you could use your own scale. Right? You could use the scale that they give you. I mean. And in here, whew, we're going from 0 to 120. So I guess I could use about the same space. And since it has more space this way, right? So 0 to 120, right? All right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120. We make it. We make it. Alright, so that's the right in them thing real quickly. 10, 20. Remember you're plotting the upper class boundaries. Please remember my voice telling you that if you get cumulative frequency, which is what I think is going to happen in me, that don't mean to revise everything else. But I feel in that cumulative frequency making a swing back. Because they bring pie charts. They bring a pie chart in January, which was like, what? What are you doing, CXC? That's very weird. Because pie charts haven't come in so long. So I don't think they're going to bring a next pie chart again. You can see that pie chart again. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Hey, what really happening here, why? One of these purple marks disappear. <laughs> disappear. Um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. When I do this, I was missing a purple mark. Uh, 120. <laughs> Keep your eyes on that one or settle for a six. Woo! That is the line at the night day, boy. Keep your eyes on one o'clock or settle for the six. <laughs> <laughs> you just get preach it to them man, preach it to the people. Alright, so remember you're using 19.5 and 5. 19.5 and 5. So 19.5. So you need to show that you're kinda using 19.5. Don't let them see that you're using 19. Yeah. In fact, if you write this down in your column next page, they know for sure this person already. 19.5 and 5. So obviously my graph in green and be the best thing in the world, but I'll, I'll, I'll be able to point out a few tips here and there. 39.5 and 16. 39.5, 16. 29.5 and 16. So now let's talk about this. So then 59.5 and 42. 59.5 and 42. Tutorials 1, 2, 3. Look out next week. Either on my Instagram or on YouTube. On both, I will be providing vital stuff for the AdMath people. AdMath syllabus is actually half as long as the math syllabus. It's just that it's hard. But the AdMath is the shortest syllabus in CXT, one of the shortest syllabus. Like it's almost like EDP, or one of them things in terms of the size of the syllabus. Right? But it's just hard. So that's why I didn't add on a whole set of things earlier. Anyhow, you're, you're holding her back. You're keeping her back. Um, we're on the third point alone. I feel like I've got 100 points there, anyway. um, 59.5 and 42. 59.5 and Let's put him about there like that. So, And then 79.5 and 79. 79.5 and 79. This is getting more and more inaccurate as we go up, man. More and more inaccurate. Right, and 99.5 and 88, 99.5 and 88, which is 79, 88, 79, 88, okay, okay, whatever, I'm not going to fight it, 99.5 and that, and then 119.5 and 90, 119.5 and 90, um, doing something so. So your frequency curve must always look like this. Always look like this. And I have a tutorial on cumulative frequency. Is the best thing out. I know I say this for all my tutorials. Eh? 
I have a tutorial on random topic is the best tutorial. <laughs> I have a tutorial on cumulative frequency is the best tutorial. But it really is the best tutorial. So go and check that. Alright, so this one went from zero. Um because from zero we'll have zero. Okay, so good. So yeah. Let, let me just let me just pretend that this was a little lower in my in my scale here. So my graph will be a little easier to draw because it's gonna be bumpy if I didn't do that. So this will go like this. And like that. Don't get frightened if your graph have a little like you see how this had a little bump there? Don't get frightened if your graph have a little bump like that. Get very frightened if your graph miss a point hole like that. <laughs> Don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> right? But I mean I just do that random with my finger. I find I look good for my dude. But don't make your graph bumpy like 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 that. Eh? That is failure. But if you go in the specimen paper in the syllabus, and I greatly advise that you do the specimen paper in the syllabus, the new syllabus, and you look at the answers, you'll realize what you need to do. It'll give you an insight to how how to draw because the specimen paper had accumulated frequency in it. So look at that and you'll see how how to draw a curve now. And like what they're looking for in the curve and how to draw a diagram. So don't forget, don't forget, write that down. Look, must look at specimen paper solutions. Solutions to the questions in the specimen paper. It can be found in the latest version of the syllabus. Alright. Yeah, so that is that. So that's your, your right your units, you write what what this was. Speed. Cumulative frequency. Just pretend that our day is cumulative frequency. Um, the speed is in kilometers per hour. Coming up to our close here, people will be coming up to our close. And um, okay, we're ready to do the next point. Every time you draw a cumulative frequency curve, they are going to ask you about probability. No, actually, I find the specimen paper was of a harder caliber than the last two exams that we gave. So, why well, I look like a freeze day? Can you see me? I need to reload this thing again. Alright, to reload this. Um, okay, so, let's go on to the last part of the question. They will access some kind of Probability thing here they didn't they ask you something on your graph below draw reference line to estimate the speed at which no more than 50% of the vehicles drove as they pass this. So they can ask you about the median or they ask you at um, no more than 50% same thing. No, this is not jeez, uh, jeez, jeez, jeez. And then you make a big mistake. Be. 50% 50% of 90 is actually 45. So I'll you understand what happened there. Fifty percent of ninety means half of ninety, right? So it's actually forty-five. So yeah, they actually bring it across from forty-five. And a common thing for them to ask is about the median. So you have, you have draw dotted lines coming across here, and then you see what point that that read off there. So that's like about fifty-eight. So no more than fifty-eight cars. The speed here will be what 58 kilometers per hour. Oh, they said you draw the lines and then you put the speed here, 58 kilometers per hour, and that's the ending. I hope I'll take a little look at what just happened there. So they at the ending of this, you're not going to see no probability tree. That is advanced. You're not going to see no probability tree. But in AdMats, we are talking about we come up to the probability in AdMats. But they could ask you something like to draw the median, and then they'll ask you something like, what's the probability that no more than no more than something cars come across? So you need to go on the frequency, find out what number they are talking about, come across, and read it. So practice your combinative frequency. Make sure and look at the specimen paper answer solution to practice on that. I want to just say a big shout out to all the 72 people still on the live today. This was one of the toughest lives to join. Tomorrow, hopefully, everybody will be on that live. We hope to break the 200 barrier. Last time, I think we made it to just 200 and then it dipped down to 150 something. So to tomorrow, we're starting at 9. I will also try to use a new feature where I 
like I have an event coming up or some kind of thing, so it will 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 show when the live is about to go on. But that requires strict planning on my part. But we'll see how that goes. So I'll try to use that. Um, any questions? Anybody have? Bless up. We on twelve fifty one. We made it. We made it. We made it. This is four nights of. And if you really study, that is three hours, three by four, twelve hours of some high quality revision here. You just need to do some, maybe or three times that amount of hours for yourself, and you'll be pretty, be, you'll be pretty prepared. But the, the thing about revision, it never stops. You can always keep tuning up on things and but polishing stuff. But you'll be more and more and more and more and more prepared if you just watch these lives. To anybody who watching the live now, don't forget to press subscribe. Um, of course, I forget to do this tonight. I didn't do a country shout out, so feel free to shout out your country now. Let me see what countries we have. I'll pull them out as we go. We have Lovey Tango, she's from Jamaica. We have Elisha. Good night to everybody. Make sure and link up. We are Trinidad, Elisha from Trinidad, Darian from Trinidad, Jamaica, Jamaica, Trinidad, Jamaica, Trinidad, 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 St. Lucia, Guyana. Blend off it, I just see the way. Guyana oils. <laughs> yeah, but they already get through that oil. I feel like coming to Guyana for real. Make, make, make room. We need a Zimba. Zimba, boy. What's wrong with you guys? Trinidad, Vesini, Jamaica. So we really are Trinidad, Guyana, Jamaica, Grenada, St. Lucia, in the house. Still. Right? I ain't see nobody else. Regin, if you're in North Korea, you ain't going and be on YouTube. I don't know if you get YouTube in North Korea. So shout out to all of y'all who make it. Make sure and review back everything. Practice your work. I really love it. Well, you have positive results. Last year, I got so... I was overwhelmed. If I was a crying person, I'd be... Oh, look at all the help that I've done and how much people, thousands of people send messages about how much people pass. So hopefully all of these things are valuable to you and you use it and you mash up that exam coming me there. Um, sensing that CXC may actually send me a message and say, bro, you're overdoing it. You're helping the people too much. But um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Later, I'm pressing the stop button. Don't forget to press like on the video. If you're still impressed, like. If you're still impressed, subscribe. Press it. Later.